Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Mind Right Game Type Show. I am your host, Michelle Morgan. I am a transformational sports coach. What that means is that I work with student athletes on the mental aspect of sports, not only reaching their full potential in sports, but also reaching their full potential in life because we're going to spend a lot more time in life than we do in sports. I am also the author of How Youth Triumph in Sports, Tools That Create a Triumphant Life, a book written for student athletes using my story through my journey of ups and downs of playing basketball, earning a basketball scholarship, on all the things that make athletes great, but most importantly is using those life skills to be great and triumphant in their own lives as well. And you can get the book on Amazon. You can also get more information and learn more about me at vidasoro.com. Today's guest is Anissa Kaysen. She is 15 years old and she was born on Fort Hood in Colleen, Texas. She was raised in the 805. Her mom's name is Angela Telly and her dad's name is Abdu Kaysen. She's currently a sophomore at Pacifica High School and she's on the track and field team. Before high school, she ran track for the Oxnard Stars. She's been running for about five years now. She currently runs the 100, the 200, the 4x100, and the 4x400, as well as high jump. So basically, she's doing all the events. And she's currently the Pacific View League champion for the 100, 200, and the 4x400 as well. So thank you, Anissa. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. You. You're welcome. So you've been running track for about five years now, and you're doing a lot of like the 100, 200s, and the 4x1. Is that something that you started out running when you started running with the Oxnard Stars? Yeah, I was predominantly a sprinter. I also ran the 4 when I was younger too, but as I progressed, I kind of stopped running it, but then got back into it as a sophomore. Awesome. So this sophomore year, you've become like you're the champion of the Pacific View League. And so what was the transition like from your freshman year? So how was your performance during your freshman year and then now seeing yourself in your performance this year as a sophomore? Um, as a freshman, I was just trying to get the feel of what high school sports would be. So I did give my all, but it was also kind of like a new learning experience. But this year at Pacifica, I really wanted to show everyone that I came there for a reason and that I was going to do something big with track. And so my goal was to make it farther than I did last year. And that's what I did. And so what do you feel like you learned the most going from your freshman year to your sophomore year? Um, one thing that I learned the most was I really have to trust what my coach is telling me, that what they're training and what they're telling me to do or telling me to run or telling me to practice is going to benefit me because it really has. And um, telling me to run different events will help me later on. So was there a point during your freshman year where you were kind of like, mm, I don't know about that coach, and then they had to keep like pushing you? Was there, was there any like, what were your feelings where you're saying like, explain to me like how that happened where you decided to trust your coaches? Well, um, my freshman year, I was at a different school and the coaching system wasn't as good as I wanted it to be or I wanted it for myself to be. So when I came to Pacifica, the coaches um, were also my coaches for when I ran the stars. So it was kind of like having the same coach my whole track career. And so he was kind of always telling me like, Nis, you need to run this event or you need to run this event for you to become a better runner in the long run or come do this for us. We need you to fill in the spot and we're going to see how this goes. And I ended up filling up a spot for the four by four and then we ended up winning league. So. Wow. And so what leg do you run on the four by four? I run the third leg. Nice. So you got that sprinter's action going. And so now that you're looking forward to going into your junior year, what are some things that you're looking to improve on and how are you going to do that? My junior year, my goal is really to go to CIF on like an individual race. So maybe the one or the two or the four. Um, I would love to go with the four by one team too, or a four by four team, but predominantly like an individual race to get there myself and then what are the things that you you have to improve on to, to reach that level um mostly i need to work on my starts because i need to build up endurance to get to the end point and um just staying focused and keeping my head down 
I, I keep my head up. <laughs> so it's kind of like your form I take, yeah. to, right? Yeah, I just need to work on my form. And so what are you committed to doing between that time to seeing that happen? Um, during the summer, my coach is going to help me get better. I'm going to have summer practices. And then off season, I'm also practicing too. So after this one week of calming down, I have practice all over again. For next so you're getting, getting right back to it already. Yep. yep. One week of rest. And then what is your, do you have a specific goal in mind that you want to achieve by running track and field? Um, I'm hoping that I get a scholarship to a college, a four year, so that I can run and go to school too for free. And um, maybe hopefully one day, maybe running for the Olympics and we'll see. Nice. That'd be awesome, right? That red, white, yeah. and blue. Yeah, man. <laughs> So tell me, like, what do you think that, what do you think that preparation looks like, you know, to have a, a vision of wanting to run one day for the Olympic team? You know, what do you feel like that preparation has to look like in order to achieve that, not only with yourself as an athlete, but also outside of sports as well? I think that for me to achieve that goal, I need to take the sport seriously because sometimes I feel like I don't, but I really need to in order to achieve what I want to do. And just keep trusting my coach because he's always going to be there. So it's not like I'm going to pop up with a new coach. But to trust him because he knows what he's doing and he's gotten kids to college on track scholarships. And to just really, like, give my all into the sport. Because if I don't, then, then I'm not going to get to do what I want to do. And so what you mentioned that you have to take it more seriously. So yeah. what, what are some things that you were doing that you weren't taking it seriously? I think for me, it's like I mix fun with seriousness. So sometimes I'm like too busy having fun with the sport and like enjoying the four by one. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's just do it. And other times I'm like, OK, I really need to beat this girl so I can get in the top spot. Like there's no playing around. Like, leave me alone. I got to get serious. <laughs> and what does your preparation look like, you know, on a game on like a race day? What does your preparation look like? Like, how do you get yourself mentally prepared and physically prepared as well? Well, at school, before I go to a meet, I usually don't eat anything that's going to make me not feel good later. So, like, any, like, chips or soda or candy or anything, I don't eat. When I get to the meet, when it's very serious, like this last one, I make sure I warm up, like, 30 minutes before the race. And I get serious. I'm, I tell everyone, like, don't talk to me. I'm in my zone right now. I got to get serious. <laughs> And then when I get into the blocks, I just like breathe and I tell myself I'm going to do fine. And then I go for it. So as a champion, you know, just fulfilling that, you know, this past week, what does it take to be a champion? Like, can you describe what it really takes, like the mentality, the, the preparation? And once again, I'm sure you prepare to be a champion, not only like during practice, but outside of practice as well. So what does that big picture look like in, in what it takes to be a champion? For me, it's, it's a lot of work. It's not always easy. And sometimes you really don't want to run, but you have to for yourself and for your team. Because the way a track meet works against another school is the points add up. So if you don't run your race your hardest, you don't get points and that affects the team in the long run. So for me, it's, I need to, get points and help my team win, not just for myself to win league, but for my team to win league. And that's what we did. And to put in work, it's, it's not always going to be fun. I'll just say that it's, it's hard work sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, I really don't want to run track, but I really got to do it. Have you seen that show up like outside of track where like there's something that you really don't want to do, but like, you know, you have to do it in order to, to see the benefit of it show up in your life as well. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, just like going into high school, like it's, you learn things and sometimes you really don't want to do something, but it's going to benefit you like moving schools. I really didn't want to do that at first, but it benefited me in the end. So was it something that you wanted to do was to switch schools? Um, initially, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where all, what about all my friends? <laughs> right. Yeah. So what have you learned? I mean, so that's, you, you experience change, right? Yeah. And sometimes change is hard to do, but what would be your advice to somebody who 
may be put in a position where change is going to occur and it's not on their terms. Like, I'm not saying I want this change, but the change kind of happens and comes to you. What is your advice to someone on experiencing that? At first, it's, it's difficult because it's new and you've never done it before. And it's not going to be easy because you've never done it before. But I think as for me, at least as the year went on, I came to like it more than I liked my old school, which is kind of weird. But I liked it and I enjoyed myself and it's just you have to get used to it like even if you don't want to do it it's something that's gonna have to happen so either you can just go with it or not go with it and make it worse for yourself. So when you first had to switch schools you were were you going with it or were you not going with it or did you have to like get motivation or from like your mom or someone else or like how did that how did you get that support to go with it and enjoy it? Well, when I first got there, everyone kind of like knew who I was. So that was cool. And I like knew people from running from the stars because a lot of the stars went to Pacifica. So it was I knew people and like the coaches already knew who I was and they were excited to have me. So it made the change a lot easier knowing that people were like ready and like excited to see me and stuff. And so even though track can be looked at sometimes as an individual sport, you know, with the, the events, but like you said, also there's like the team component to it as well with earning points. What, in your opinion, makes you a great teammate? For me, it's, I know I can do my part. If I know that I can run the one or the two or the four by one or the four by four or high jump as best as I can to get points, then I do that. And sometimes if I don't want to run an event, I just run it because I know that in the long run, it's going to help the team. And so I want to ask you about the high jump because you do a lot of these sprinting races and then you're like, I'm in the one, I'm in the two, I'm in the four by one. And then it's like, you're in high jump. So yeah. where does high jump play a role in your sprinting? Cause I'm assuming there's something that the high jump does to benefit you in sprinting. I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, honestly, it's kind of a funny story. When I went to my old school, my coach was like, Hey, you look like you can jump. And I was like, oh, I really only long jump. And he was like, okay, well, we'll see you at high jump practice tomorrow. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I ended up doing it. And I actually really liked it because it's fun. It's like, I don't have to be so serious. Like when I get into the box, I have to like be serious and be on it. But with high jump, it's like, okay, like just jump over the, just hop over the pole. So it's, it helps sometimes because it's like not so stressful or not so serious but you still get points and they still add up to the team score and your individual score. So. So the high jumps like your fun event. Yeah. It's like my, let me cool down and enjoy myself. <laughs> my uh, not take it so seriously. Yeah. And you make it sound so simple. Like, Oh, you just have to jump over the pool. Like we can oh, all just it jump is, over. It is not. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Like I watch people do that and I'm like, Oh my gosh. Even when I see javelin, I'm like, Whoa. Oh yeah. So, I <laughs> Yeah. Or the pole vault. It's a pole vault, not yeah, javelin. It's one, the pole vault. So is there anything else that, you know, you've experienced that you want to share to, you know, anybody who may be watching this, not just because they're student athletes, because also because you have the athlete part, but you're the student part and you have life, you're living your life as well in the midst of all of this, in terms of all the hard work you're giving during practice, after school school, studying to make sure that you keep your grades up to stay on the team. Is there anything that maybe you've experienced that you want to shed some light on? Because, you know, maybe someone else might have experienced the same thing. And then you want to just give some words of encouragement about that. I would think like the best thing I could tell someone else is probably manage your time. Because with school and practice and meets, sometimes you miss out on a fifth period class because we're leaving right after lunch or right at lunch. And you have to get the work. It's just make, making sure you get the work and managing your time. Like sometimes at track meets, you'll have to do homework or you'll have to do work. Or instead of going out with your friends after a track meet, you'll have to go home and do homework. So it's not, you, you just need to manage your time, I would think is probably the best thing I could say. Nice. So managing your time, even when I'm hearing you say that, it's, it's almost like a part of discipline too, because you're doing your homework during the track meet, you have to figure out your time like afterwards. And so it's also being disciplined and to stay committed to yourself as well, because no one's watching you. I don't, I'm, I don't know if the coaches are like, here's a homework corner while you guys wait. <laughs> so it's like something that, you know, 
you have to, you're creating for yourself, you know, is that discipline and that commitment to your goals as well. So that's, that's very powerful too, in terms of like your time management, because we all can get, you know, lost. I can turn on social media and the next thing you know, 20 minutes have gone by. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, I just wanted to look at one picture. And now I've seen like everybody's life for like the past two days. And so it can go really fast. So I think that's, that's awesome. And how, how have you done that? Like, what's your, how do you manage your time? You know, how do you do that? How do you stay on top of that? For me, it's sometimes doing work after meets instead of going out or doing homework at meets or on the bus to meets or the next day get, spending my lunch with the fifth period teacher that I miss. It's just making sure that I get the work so I stay on top of it so I'm not missing anything or making it appear on my grades. So. I love that. Anissa, you're, you're on the right path. Like even just hearing you say that because it's, it's not easy to say, you know what, I'm going to go talk to my fifth period teacher instead of like maybe going to lunch and being around my friends or committing to my homework and what I missed instead of, you know, going, hanging out with my friends or finding other things to do. So it seems very uh, mature of you to put your priorities in perspective. So you're saying, hey, Olympics, right? And then <laughs> I got to meet those expectations with my actions. So my, my, my vision is Olympics, my actions got to meet Olympics. And so you're putting that up there and I can hear the commitment as to what you're saying. I, I can hear it already. I don't even, I don't have to see it. If you're telling me it and you're telling me the truth, then girl, you're, you're, you're on the right path and that's awesome. So I definitely look forward to all the amazing things that are going to come, you know, when you start hitting your junior season, because we all know school's about to, you know, hit and the summer's about to happen right now. So you know, all that hard work is going to continue to pour in and you're going to continue to shine. So I look forward to that. You. You're welcome. So I want to thank you for being on the show. But before you me. leave, before you leave, you got to finish this sentence. Okay. Okay. I am grateful for my family. Perfect. So once again, Anissa, thank you again for being on the Mind Right Game Type show. Continue to shine, continue to smile, continue to be committed, passionate, all those great things that are making you like who you are in, in the world, not just in sports, but the people who are listening to this, myself included, who are seeing you as an inspiration to all the things that you're doing. Because I can find commitment and I can learn something from anybody. I don't care if you're a sophomore. It's still something that I'm learning from you right now. So be proud of yourself. Be proud of your accomplishments and continue to reach higher and higher. You, you, you're reaching for the stars as an Oxnard star, and now, you're, girl, you're going higher. You're reaching that top of that podium as an Olympic athlete. So it's really awesome to see that with, through your college and everything. I already know I'm going to see. I already know I see you there. So you got I know you got it. Just keep what you're doing. Continue to work hard, and I know you'll, you'll see yourself rise. That's for sure. And that's my vent. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once again, thank you, everybody, for watching the Mind Red Game Tight Show. Treasure yourself and shine.